So what you want to do first, obviously, is open up uh, main stage. Uh, this is using main stage three, as you can see. I'm not sure if uh, all this will work the same with main stage two, but I'm pretty sure it does. Um, all right, so over to main stage, and this quick start menu will come up. You want to click on keyboards and click on keyboard. Go figure. And easy way to start from scratch. I don't know why there is not like an empty template to start from in the quick start menu, but whatever. All you need to do is go over here to the patch list where it says classic electric piano. Just click it and press delete. And go to layout, command A to select everything, and delete it. Boom. Now you have absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. So now you have to set up your layout. And you can do this by obviously going to the layout menu or uh, layout window rather, tab, whatever. Uh, go to all controls. And you could just add a keyboard, but I'm a stickler for consistency and the little stuff like that. So obviously I have the uh, XS7, so I'm going to pick the 76 key keyboard. Or you could pick whichever one you want. It doesn't really make a difference uh, as far as the actual performance. Uh, but it just, I don't know, it's just a personal preference. So you click this and you drag it into this window here. And you drag it uh, wherever you want, preferably a little bit here, like a little bit here. A little bit above the bottom so you can have room for your uh, sustained pedal and whatnot. So uh, about here is fine. Right in the center. Yeah, just click out of the keyboard and click back onto it to get rid of the stupid layers because you don't really need it. Okay. Now we can add faders. Now I have the XS7, which has eight faders that actually register MIDI data. It blew my mind when I uh, set it up yesterday because I didn't think it worked because I had an ES originally and those faders did not register any MIDI output. So I'm going to add eight faders. Or what you could do is add four separate vertical faders, which would be pretty lame, but whatever. Adding my eight vertical faders here. And as you might have seen, the the faders uh, move the pitch bend, and I'll get to that in a second, because uh, it's really weird. You could also use the round knobs or the, 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 the directional knobs if you want, but I prefer using the faders, because obviously the keyboard has faders and not uh, uh, wheels. Let's finish uh, setting up our little layout here. Next, what you might want to have is a meter, an output meter. So you can put this wherever you want, put it over here, it doesn't really matter, it's just nice to have. Um, and I like to be fancy with a, a VU meter, I don't know why, it's pretty, it just looks cool. Adds a lot of coolness to the already present cool. Alright, enough. Okay, <laughs> so, I think that's about, oh, nope, 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 not done. We need a MIDI activity button. We'll just drag that here. This is uh, useful in uh, diagnosing problems, if there are any, with your uh, MIDI configuration and connection, or whatever. Uh, it's just nice to have, so you can confirm that there's actually MIDI data going through from your keyboard to main stage or whatever. Uh, oh, I almost forgot. I'm going to need a pedal, right? Sustain pedal. So that's all I have is a sustain pedal. And this is overlapping a little bit. Just Drag that down. Drag this up. Oops. Bring that up there a little bit. Just like that. And you can also change the size of these uh, objects too if you want to fit your liking. Doesn't really make much of a difference, but I don't know. Okay. So we have our MIDI uh, activity button, we have our faders, we have the VU meter, and a regular other, other, a regular other meter, whatever. <laughs> okay. Also, what I prefer having is a panic button. So what we'll do, we'll add a drum pad. Is it a drum pad? Yeah, we'll add a drum pad here. And that's it. This might look a little weird for now, but once we start mapping everything, it'll start making a lot of sense. Um, 
Oh, you might want to have another fader, another separate fader. For uh, so we can put actually, let's get rid of the vertical fader and put over a horizontal fader here. And we'll put a separate vertical fader here. This one we'll use for our uh, master output. Okay. Okay, so I just had to go through everything all over. Well, not everything, but I just had to do something uh, about a thousand and a half times to figure out how to do it right. Uh, before you even begin to map everything, the eight faders will uh, not only change the level of the actual channel strip, but it'll also change the pitch bend. And I figured out how to fix this by changing the pitch bend's MIDI port to port one. Because everything else will be on port 2 once you begin assigning them. So make sure you change the pitch bin wheel MIDI port to port 1. And that'll be that. Uh, you don't have to assign it. You just have to change the channel. Because uh, by default, the MIDI uh, port... Well, not the MIDI ports, but the MIDI numbers for pitch bin and modulation are... Uh, they sort of match, not sort of, but they do match with uh, what the default would be for main stage. Or whatever, it's, it's, it's too technical to get into, but you don't have to assign it, just change the port and you'll be great. All right, next. Now, this map, uh, this channel, I already did it, but we'll do it again. You click on this uh, channel right here, you click on assign, and, and you change the, you just move the fader. And then you can go along right down the, uh, well, not move with the arrow. Just go on right down Whoa. and map each each channel strip, each fader rather. Boom boom. Wow, my phone stopped recording. Whatever. Just keep on going down down the down the strip. Down the strip. Yep. It's a little weird. You might have to click around the actual fader to get get it to register. And for the oops, nope. And don't mind uh, the pitch bend text down here. We can just change that. Uh, and this will be the panic button. And I like well, I map this to the the stop sequence transport button on my motif. Uh, it's just the stop button. And there you go. Um. And you can make this say panic. You don't have to, you can turn that off. Whoa, why is the font so large? Yeah, there we go. Whatever. Um, okay. This is piano. We can change this to, I guess, strings. Um, and you get the gist. You could just go on down the line and do whatever you want. Uh, oh, I forgot to map this one. Assign, and I, for my original uh, concert here, I just used the uh, last knob on my keyboard for this. But it's really weird how it works. Like, you know how with the motifs in the middle it has that little, like, not a lock, but it sort of stays there with if you try and tug it? And I want that to be, like, zero, but I don't know how to sort of set that up, but I don't care. It, it, it works for what it is. Turn off a sign. You might want to save as you go along, but I'm not going to save this because I already have my own. Now, as you can see, everything is mapped. Each of the faders and that, the uh, last wheel for uh, the master, and the panic button. Also, you want to change this to uh, just master, I guess. Ma Excuse me, that's not what I typed. I don't know why the font is being so stupid, but whatever. You know, whatever. Whatever. We don't need text for this. I mean, if you see red, then you know what's going on. All right. This looks really tacky. and didn't look like this when I did it yesterday, but I don't care. Everything's mapped. To per uh, yeah, whatever. Great. So we're done with that. Now we have to assign... Uh, them to our channels or whatever. Okay. So we have the master. We can change this setting to the master to volume. 
map it and then do it all over again with the uh, the knob. And as you can see over here, it's actually changing the master output. Now to map these to the uh, individual channels, you map them first. Now, as you can see, I have my piano already set up, and I don't have a strings channel yet, but I uh, I already mapped the strings channel too. Let's just change this to strings. And that's that. And we'll just go on down the line, same as always. Change this to pad. And we'll change this to MKS. Come on, get out the way. Stupid thing. MKS. Just go on down the line with the mapping. Pat channel name, volume, map. Boom. Channel strip, corresponding channel number, name, volume, map, and map it. And just go on down the line. Uh, so let's get rid of this pitch bin text because it's kind of bugging me. It's kind of bugging me. Now, let's add a strings channel. Actually, no, let's finish mapping. See how I have the panic button? Let's go to actions, scroll down to panic. And what this panic button will do, okay, let's put map, boom. And what this panic button, well, what a panic button does, period, is it kills all current like the current midi stream like if you're holding a note let's see if my piano's, piano's on actually yeah my piano's on say i'm holding a note and i let go i'm obviously holding the sustain pedal but pretend i'm not holding the sustain pedal like the computer will like say that your computer trips out and it just holds that note while you're not even playing it or everything is just sustained for no reason and you're not using the sustain pedal press that panic button and it'll cut everything off it'll perform a mini reset and you'll good to go and you'll start all over again cool that's straight now okay let's add a uh, strings patch I'm just gonna pick any strings patch you know let's just use a random strings patch let's add a pad synthesizer pad uh, I don't know what's a nice pad guys Let's see. Soft analog pad. Let's see here. That sounds like crap for what I'm trying to do, but whatever. I don't care. And let's add the MKS. Thank you, Joe. Joe, you know who you are if you're watching this. All right, let's just go with the default. Whatever. All right, and I have my MKS rolling. So that's that. And from here... You can pretty much, uh, you know, EQ your uh, your sounds, uh, add a compressor or whatever, and I mean I don't know. You just you just play, you know. I don't really have a good stack set up because I didn't use any of my favorite sounds. I just want to show you guys the gist of how to actually do this because it's really really weird. And I'm glad I spent the time to figure it out yesterday. And I'm still learning this program. I'm not the best, so. You know, I figured I'd share what I learned with you guys. So I don't know. Now that you have your stack, make sure you save. Uh, and just go through your sounds. Make sure they work. That pad really sucks. And I don't know. Just play. Add a little stuff to your... Let's change this. Let's get rid of that stupid pad and use one of the pads in the MKS. All right. So I changed the patch to an MKS. And they sound that much better. I'm just picking anything now so you guys can understand how to do this. You can pick your own sounds. I don't care. All right. So, yeah. Just set up your uh, little channels and you play. You know, it's that simple. I don't know. I don't know. You just play from there. And uh, there's some customize you can do. Like, you can... Oh, shit. I almost forgot. You actually you definitely want to make use of your horizontal meter. Let's move this up a little bit. It's kind of misplaced. Um, and the VU meter too. Click on this and change it to level. Ha ha ha. What an idiot. And change this one to output level too. 
What an idiot. Just so that when you use it on stage, it looks pretty cool and you have something interesting to look at. And you can go to performance mode and there you go. You have everything kind of set. I don't know. It's that easy. I don't know. Oh god, that pad, die! Yeah, that's pretty much it. Proof that it works. There is some, yeah, like I said, there's some customization you can do that I'll do in another video. That'll probably be like another two minutes, but uh, it'll be a short video and I'll, I'll just show you how you can add a background to this. I'm not sure if you can add a background to the actual uh, quote unquote concert, but you can definitely change the colors of these, uh, that crap. Now my pitch bin doesn't even work. I don't even care because I hate pitch bin. Oh, I should probably remap it. <laughs> and I said I wasn't, you don't need to remap it. But, give me one. pitch bin, map. Because I hate using pitch bin. I'm not a keyboardist, yo. Alright, so that's that, yeah. Um, yeah. So you can change the colors of these lights and whatnot. Uh, you can change the color of the what the panda button shows. You can change the color of what the MIDI input button shows. See right here. Um, but with these, you have to do them in the layout window. And I'll get in that in another video. So uh, let me know if this worked for you guys. Uh, share your thoughts and your personal tips on uh, how to do this. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of ways to uh, get this done. But this is just the way I, I see fit and how I figured out how to do it. And I figured I'd share it with you guys. So, um, yeah. Peace. Patch. Uh, a synth brass. And a really crappy synth that I have actually muted. And a synth bass in case I ever need to use it on a gig. Now, see, my pitch bend is colored. The uh, MIDI thing is colored. The panic button is red. Uh, and my VU meters are... I mean, my audio is pretty normal. I don't know what's with me in G today. Alright. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So, thank you for watching. Peace out.